<laughs> All right, I'm here with Jerry Crispin. Guys, this is special. This is a big moment for me. I don't get a lot of time to do this on camera. I get a lot of time with you, right? Uh, so we're coming from the Candidate Experience uh, Wine Reception, thus the wine. Um, nice choices, Jerry, on yes, this. Yes, and you all too. Right. So you know this is a passion center for both of us, right? Yes. But we, we all consider you sort of the father of the Candidate Experience movement. Why does it matter? Oh, it matters because every single stakeholder need, has needs that have to be met. And, and if you look at the decision that's made by a corporation, we're so in need, if you will, of great talent that we fundamentally don't want to engage them from a timing point of view. Mm -hmm. We tend to engage them that, I need you right now, come here. Right. As opposed to, when is the best time of your life to be working for us? When it's best for you and best for us. And if we had that kind of thinking, it would be extraordinary. Now, I gotta, I gotta admit, we have, we have too many, um, problems in, in life to be able to do that perfectly, but we should be trying better than we are. And to the extent that we um, listen to the candidates who are out there and what they need in order to make a better decision, uh, to the extent that we help them to be able to share with us uh, the kinds of things that they want to tell us about why they want to compete for this job right now. Um, the extent to which we hold recruiters accountable for the success of not only bringing a great person into the great seat, but that that person believes that they, this, this was the best decision for them, is really where we have to be. And that's the, I believe that's the future of the companies that are going to succeed um, in the 21st century. It almost sounds like work matters, is what you're really talking about here, right? Work matters, but my passion around work is so essential, and it shifts and changes depending upon where I am in my life. If I'm married, if I have kids, if I have a variety of things going on, or whether I'm just, you know, really focused on, you know, a specific aspect of the job. Yeah. The, the corporation has to kind of accommodate pieces of that, mm -hmm. and the companies with the kind of the agility and the flexibility to work with their employees around that, are, I think are going to succeed um, and grow in an extraordinary way. So some people might listen to this and say that seems a little soft, right? Um, what we know from this is that we also see candidate as consumer of work and candidate as consumer. And there's a real need for, for companies that have something to sell me as a candidate, right? right? Um, if I have a choice about where I buy from or who I buy from, and I have a bad experience with you trying to work for you, that I may say, you know what, I'm not going to buy your stuff anymore, right? So we've done a lot of work around how negative sentiment, right, can impact me as a consumer, right? right? That's not so soft, that's business, no. right? And that is, that is the issue. For many, many years, we've been talking about soft, soft issues mm -hmm. versus those hard issues. And some of them are, you know, fixed in stone, I get that, from a business perspective in terms of how we make money. But often, the context for making money in those hard issues is a very short time frame. Yeah. Whereas the soft issues tend to be um, understood from an ROI point of view over a longer period of time. And soft issues today can be measured. You just talked about that sentiment issue. So in the customer realm, we are measuring sentiment, we are measuring customer loyalty, we're measuring the extent to which a customer would refer others and buy product on a continuing basis. We should be able to do the same thing from a candidate point of view. And, and the extent to which those candidates, the, not only the ones we hire, but the ones we don't hire, impact our bottom line in terms of whether or not they're going to continue to buy product, refer others, or reapply because they've learned something from us and are so intent on working with us that they come back time and time again until we damn well hire them. Um, I find that extraordinary. Oh. Amen. And I, I want to see more and more companies experiment with the potential for creating a totally engaged workforce that is aligned from the point at which we start looking at that workforce yeah. all the way through to the employees themselves. I do not want companies to create a great candidate experience and then bring them to hell. Because un unfortunately, that's going to, that's going to charge up that turnover yeah. and screw up my numbers. <laughs>
<laughs> bring it, bringing it back to Jerry. I love that. So we're also not dealing with small scale here. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of candidates. Well, really millions yes. that we've got subset of hundreds of thousands of people who are telling us this information, right? Yeah, at this point, we have a, literally a couple hundred thousand candidates, and I believe that we'll double that this year. So, so if we can increase the amount of data that we have coming in and manage it in a way that helps us better understand what are the core practices, and none of them, by the way, are, are rocket science, but we need, since we do so many different things in our touch points with candidates, we need to map out those that are priority to make sure that we absolutely do that. So for example, uh, we were talking today about um, in the application, very simple kind of thing. The last question of the application should be, what didn't we ask you? And we find that if we do that, we tap a different attitude about the can that the candidate has that I want to fairly get up to bat. And the only way you get me up to bat is not only will I answer your questions, but I'd like to tell you why I think I'm competitive for this job. Yeah. And you didn't ask me some of those questions. Right. And we find that, p that companies that do ask that in the application are rated higher. And now we talk about the, the phone screen. And now we talk about the, the, you know, the interview and each interview. And the interview at the end of the interview day, if we're asking that question, have you been able to tell us all the things that you think are important to compete for this job in terms of your skills, knowledge, and experience? We're impacting not just the people we hire, we're impacting the people we don't hire. And those are the ones who increasingly have an impact on whether or not the next pe person who comes and applies comes and applies because one of those other folks who applied in the past or didn't get hired said, hey, this is a great company and I didn't get the job, but I know you would. So go and apply to that company. That is powerful and I think there are a number of companies today who are already getting that frictionless recruiting opportunity. There's actually hundreds of them, Jerry, and we appreciate you we for bringing them all together yeah, and uh, convening us around a common goal. So cheers to you. Cheers.